Hello and welcome to my pre-algebra review series. This video covers chapter 10, section 7, titled Volume, Prisms and Cylinders. By the end of this video, you will have reviewed recent lessons regarding finding the volume of prisms and finding the volume of cylinders. We bring this review to a close with a look at, the, at a real world problem. Please leave a like if you find this video to be helpful. Give your classmates a heads up too. It will more than likely help them and it certainly will help this channel to be seen by more students. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave a comment in the comment section below. I read them and do my best to address each as time permits. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell icon to be notified every time I release a new video. Thank you. Let's get into this one. Let's start by looking at a few definitions. A volume. The volume of a three-dimensional figure is the number of cubic units it takes to fill it. A cubic unit is a space occupied by a cube with edges one unit long. We'll look at that as we move forward in this section. Objective 1A, finding the volumes of prisms. The volume of a three-dimensional figure is the number of cubic units it takes to fill it. A cubic unit is the space occupied by a cube with edges one unit long. So as we look at this, maybe this will that'll be clear. So consider filling a rectangular prism to the right with centimeter cubes. This with one centimeter. So these little cubes they're talking about down here. Well, where's my pencil? There it is. These little cubes, I'll point to this one right here. This little cube right there is one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. That's a little one centimeter cube. Okay? So that's what they said when they say one unit long. Could be miles, it could be feet, could be whatever, yards. This one happens to be centimeters, one centimeter. Okay? The bottom layer of the prism contains 8 times 5, or 40 cubic centimeter cubes, or a, or a volume of 40 cubic centimeters. Cubic. And why is it cubic? Because it's a length times a width times a height. So that's centimeters by centimeters by centimeters. Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Just like we did with the surface area, now we're doing volume. Instead of it being square centimeters, now it's cubic. Because now there's depth, width, and height in our cubes. So as you see here, they're saying that this, this cubic, uh, this prism right here, is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cubic centimeters wide, and one, two, three, four, five, going back in this direction, five cubic centimeters deep. So when we add them together, you have 40 cubic centimeters. Not add them together, multiply them. Okay, so the prism has four layers of cubes. So you see when you see the full picture, there's one, two, three, four layers of cubes. So it contains four times 40 or 160 cubic, uh, a centimeter cubes in all. The volume of this prism is 160 cubic centimeters. Hopefully that clears up what the one cubic long edge was. and So now you see, like I said, it could have been a foot, could have been a yard, could have been a meter, okay, a millimeter. Okie doke. Good. So we're going to move on to the next slide. Objective 1B, okay, the volume of a rectangular prism above, the one that we just went through uh, looking at, suggests the following formula found here in this key concepts. The volume of a prism. The volume of a prism is the product of the base area times the height, h. So volume v is equal to b h, b times h. And the picture shows it right here. This, this right here, this base area right here, the colored area down in here. You find that area. And, and up in the top, we did, it was the first layer. Remember the first layer? We were talking about cubics, it was 40 cubes. 
So the bottom layer, and then you multiply it times the height. That was equivalent to like the four layers going up in that prism. Okay, so <clears throat> that's it. Base times the height. The area of the base times the height. Okay, example one, finding the volume of a prism. Find the volume of the triangular prism shown here on the right. Well, if we look at it, we investigate it, we see that it is definitely a triangular prism. It has two bases and a an lateral area around it, right, that we can remember from the surface area. We see that the length of this prism is 21 centimeters. We can see that if we look at this triangle here, we see a rising, we have a 90 degree angle in the back here. So six, the base could be 10. If we flip it over on its side, the base could be 10 and the height would be six. So let's go with those numbers, okay? So we want the volume of this prism. So the volume is equal to, the volume of the prism is equal to, for the triangle, one half the base times the height times the length. Okay, base is 10, height six, length 21. So now we'll replace these numbers. So we have one half times the base, I said is 10, times six, times 21. If we simplify it, I'll do it a little bit at a time here. V, the volume is equal to one half times 10 is five, five times six is 30. So I'll do the 30 times 21, because that's a little more mathematics here. And what is that really? Well, 30 times 20 is how much? 600. So V is equal to 600 and what? Because there's one extra, one extra 30 we need, right? So it's 630 centimeters. Centimeters what? Well, remember when we were doing the, air, the surface areas, all these centimeters and inches were all square. But if you look here at our figure, we have centimeters right here by centimeters by centimeters. I see three of them. So that means centimeters cubed. You multiply centimeters three times. In order to get the volume of this pyramid, uh, this pr prism, pr excuse me, prism, you have to multiply by centimeters three times. Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Centimeters cubed. Okay? I'm sure you've got that now. Good. Okay, example one, check your understanding. Find the volume of the triangular prism. Okay, go ahead and do that. When you get done, come on back. We'll do it together. Okay, now that you're back, let's take a look at it. <clears throat> Just like the other one on the previous slide, I'm going to go with volume is equal to what? Well, there, there are two bases. And the base, we can find the, the area of the base, this triangle, is... The base is eight feet and the height is six feet. They tell us the height right here. Okay, so we're gonna do one half the base times the height times the length. Okay, V equals one half. What is the base? Eight. What is the height? It's six. Six and these are feet, by the way, and times the length, and the length is nine. Okay, so we have <clears throat> a, a half, let's, let's see, six times nine to 54. Uh, I'm trying to come up with some easier ways of doing this. So we have um, a half of eight is four, four times six is 24, so let's go with that much, 24, times 9. Well, 24 times 10 is 240. So we're going to, if we subtract 24 from that, we're going to have what? We're going to do 20 and then 16, right? It's going to be, the volume is going to be equal to 216, what? Feet cubed. Okay?
You got that? Objective two, find the volume of a cylinder. You can calculate the volume for a cylinder in much the same way you calculate the volume for a prism, just like we did in the previous slides. So, so the key concept here is the volume of a prism. The volume of a prism is the product of the base area, just like we did the triangular area above, the base area times the height, okay, which we call the height, the length in the, uh, in the upper slide. So, and the formula is just that. It's the base times the height. Here they use the base. The base is this entire area. This entire area down here is the base. And then, of course, we know the height is the height of the cylinder. Okay? Example two, it's a real-world problem. Find the volume of the juice can to the nearest cubic centimeter. Okay, so... This is, uh, we're going to take a look at this. So we're, again, we're doing volume. So we have volume. And what are we going to do here? We have a, a base. We have two bases. We're only concerned about one when we're doing volume. Surface areas, we, got, we have two bases. We have to consider the area of both. But in volume, we only need one of the bases plus the height or the length of the cylinder. In this case, it's 12 centimeters is the length. And the radius is 3.4 centimeters. So we want to have the area of the can. Well, that's pi r squared. Okay, so that's the area. So we're going to put pi r squared. And then that's all multiplied by the length of the can, the length of the cylinder. Okay, so when we run this out now, we see we have pi. R, so we're gonna, R is 3.4 squared times 12. So those are the numbers for pi. So if we wanted the exact area of this can, we would leave pi in the equation, in the answer, but we're going to use pi to its decimal equivalent, so to speak, is 3.14 times 3.4 squared times 12. <clears throat> and I'm going to need my calculator for this. So I'm going to stop the video and get the calculator going. Okay, so when, I when I'm done with the calculator, and you can do the same thing with your calculator, you're going to end up with, um, th excuse me, 435 point five eight Oh, or zero eight. Okay, that's the number. We'll, that's obviously goes forever if we had this pi going forever. But they want this to the nearest cubic centimeter, so we're going to change this to v is equal to to the nearest, which would be rounding up because this is a five, greater than five, the the fraction part. So we're rounding up four hundred and thirty six cubic, what is it? Centimeters. Cubic, right? Cubic centimeters. <clears throat> so that's that. We rounded it up from 435 to 436 because we wanted the nearest cubic centimeter. Okay, example two, check your understanding. Find the volume of a cylinder to the nearest foot. It's a two-part question. The first one is just that same direction. Find the volume of the cylinder to the nearest foot. The second, part B, how does the volume of the cylinder compare to the one having twice its dimensions? If you remember, that's similar to the one we did with the uh, surface area question. Um, and it's the same concept, but it's not the same number. So you'll su surprise yourself, I guess, when we do this. So go ahead and pause the video, work these out, and then we'll come back and do them together. <clears throat> okay. So now that you've uh, had the time to work these out, let's go ahead and do part A. So we're going to say the volume of this cylinder is the volume is equal to um, the base times the height. Or in our case, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to change it so it's constant. I'm going to say the base times... Oh, darn, didn't, didn't work. 
or now we switched, the base times the length, L, okay? So now volume is equal to pi r square times L. The base is pi r square, it's an area of a circle, and the length of the cylinder is five feet. In this case, we'll find out. So V is equal to pi, um, I'm gonna say 3.14 times r squared, which is 11 squared times five. And when we carry that math out, we go a little further. This is 3.14, times 11 squared is 121 times five. Next step, V is equal to 3.14. 121 times five is 605. Five times 100 is 500. Is 500. Five times 20 is 100, that's 600. Five times one is five, that's 605. Times 605. And the last multiplication we're going to do, the volume here, is 3.14 times 605. And yeah, I needed my calculator for that, but when we, round, when we do this and we round it to the nearest foot, it comes out to be 1,900 feet. What? Squared? Cubed? Cubed. Because it's feet times feet times feet. Where do we get the feet times feet times feet? Well, we have feet here for the height, but we also have in the radius feet times feet. 11 feet times 11 feet. You had to square the feet too when you squared the, the 11. Okay, so it's 1,900 feet squared. <clears throat> the number was actually a little under 1,900, very little bit. So how does the volume conserve the cylinder is compared with one having twice its volume? So now our cylinder over here, I'm going to draw our cylinder. So now our cylinder has a radius here of 22 feet and a elevation or length or height of 10 feet. So if we do the math on that, it's the volume is equal to, and I'm going to go right to it, 3.14 times 22 squared times 22 squared times 10. And when you do that, that number comes out to 15,000, um, what did I write down, 197.6. Well, that number rounded to the nearest cubic foot would be 15,198, okay, feet Cube. Well, how does this number, 15,198, compare to 1,900 feet? Well, if I do that, if I say 15,198 divided by 1,900, I'm going to get an answer of approximately, approximately equal to 8. 8 times and the surface area, it was two, it was four times. And this one is eight times. So it's an interesting concept.